Alright guys, before I start today's video, I just wanted to share a quick announcement with you all. I will be back on the Nuckhead Podcast for this week's installment premiering on June 6th at 5.30 in the morning Pacific time. And listen, it was a very fun episode to film, two Canucks fans going back and forth about the season we just had, along with a ton of very interesting topics regarding this Vancouver Canucks team's future. I definitely recommend you go check it out. The link to Nuckhead's podcast along with his main channel will be in the description down below. Definitely be sure to check him out if you haven't done so already, and without further ado, on to today's video. So, I understand. You've seen the thumbnail, you know what this video is all about, and considering we're talking about the biggest fish on this UFA market this upcoming summer, sure, the chances of this actually happening might not be the most likely, but let me tell you right now, if there's one thing that I've learned about this current management team with Patrick Alvin and Jim Rutherford, is that they are not scared to be proactive, to get creative and take a risk. Because right now, if you want a guy like Reinhardt or another big fish on the market, you're going to have to do a little bit of weaving. Because right now, the cap situation isn't exactly the best. Thank you to my boy Jim Benning for screwing us the next couple of seasons with the OEL contract on our books. And even Garland. I love the player, but for $5 million... You'd obviously much rather have Dylan Gunther on a league minimum that would have made this a home run. But since we don't have that luxury, you gotta be a little bit more innovative. Because obviously we had links to Jake Gensel earlier on in the season. We know how Jim Rutherford feels about him. But we've just heard that Jake Gensel is looking to play in the States. So that's not happening. You also have Steven Stamkos, but that guy is way too old, so I wouldn't go near him. But Sam Reinhardt is a BC boy. He's from Vancouver. He grew up a Canucks fan. And right now, the Florida Panthers, the team he is currently playing on, is on the brink of winning the Stanley Cup. They are four wins away, and I think they're going to be the team to do it. If they win, Sam Reinhart will feel like the job in Florida has been done. And it should really go without saying that if he does win in Florida, he'll feel less pressure to feel like he has to stay in Florida. And if he does decide to test the free agent market, it should be obvious that Vancouver would be a team he would be very interested in joining next season, especially after the season they just had. So if we're talking about interest alone, it's definitely mutual on both sides because Reinhardt being from BC would love to play in his hometown and the Vancouver Canucks are looking for a top six winger to play with Elias Pedersen. And man, with Miller and Bester on the top line and then Pedersen and Reinhardt on the second line, that just sounds insane already, but if we step away from dreamland for a second here, let's talk about one potential way that I feel you can free up some money to at least make this a little bit more of a possibility. I think it starts with Ilya Mikheyev, and I really believe that with this guy's speed, you can still trade him for basically nothing, and I'd be okay with that. Teams want speed, and I could definitely see a team like the New York Islanders biting on this guy to help them in that department, and they could also look at him earlier on in this season. He was scoring goals. I don't know what happened. He fell off a cliff, but surely you look at that and you say, okay, maybe we can get this guy close to that level once again next season with a little bit more confidence and a fresh start. So you clear basically 5 million bucks. That's big. And you know, I get it. I know after hearing this, a lot of people are still probably going to say Sam Reinhardt is way out of our budget and he's going to cost way too much. But it's important to remember that not even a week ago, people were sold on the idea of acquiring Marty Natchez. And I'm still down for that if we decide to go down that route. But it's important to note that Marty Natchez would probably be costing you around 7 to $7.5 million. Not to mention, on top of Marty Natchez, people were also saying, go and get yourself another piece like a Tyler Toffoli. And that would cost you way more than a hometown Reinhardt. So I guess what it comes down to is, which route are you trying to go down? The one that has a little bit more depth? Or do you want to go all in with a guy like Reinhardt in your top six? And then fill the other supporting roles with more expendable players? I'm not saying this is anything that, you know, is on the radar of any Canucks insider. I just wanted to make this video because... It is definitely a possibility and something worth noting with this management group's track record. We know they're not scared to make a big splash. And I know that Patrick Alvin is going to be looking to improve the roster for next season. So we'll see what he decides to do. 
and how he maneuvers with the cap because man without that OEL deal this would be a no-brainer and Sam Reinhart would be the number one acquisition target for this Canucks team this offseason but since it's not that simple it is a little bit more frustrating but we'll see what happens thank you so much for watching make sure you like and subscribe if you're new and I will see you all in the next one peace out and take care